It was 3.15 p.m. on February 1st, 2015. Today, the biggest sports game of the year was about to be played. The 12-4 Seattle Seahawks were about to play the 12-4 New England Patriots in the Super Bowl. Play clock at 5. Pass is intercepted at the goal line by Malcolm Butler. Unreal. Malcolm Butler, who almost made the phenomenal play that wound up in Percy's arms. There are flags on the field. Our story starts in September 2005. The Seattle Seahawks started off the 2005 NFL season with a 14-26 loss falling to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Then they beat the Atlanta Falcons and Arizona Cardinals to improve their record to 2-1. The next week they faced the Washington Redskins where they lost 17-20 in overtime. After their loss to the Redskins, the Seahawks went on a three-game win streak, beating the Rams, Texans, and Cowboys to improve their record to 5-2 and two on the season. After a Week 8 bye, the Seahawks continued their winning streak, winning seven of their next eight games, beating Jesus the Cardinals, Christ. Rams, 49ers, Giants, Eagles, 49ers again, Titans, Colts, and finally losing to the Packers in the final regular season game. This season set the record for the Seahawks' best record in franchise history. With a 13-3 record, the Seahawks advanced to the divisional round of the playoffs. In the divisional round, they beat the Washington Redskins 21-10, and they played the Carolina Panthers in the NFC Championship game, where they won 34-14, taking home Seattle's first conference championship and their first trip to the Super Bowl. The Seahawks faced the Pittsburgh Steelers in Super Bowl 40. This is one of the worst ref Super Bowls in history. The Seahawks had many bad calls on them by the refs. The Seahawks ended up losing 21 to 10 in a heartbreaking loss. Later the refs admitted to calling some bad penalties. Uh, we were robbed um, in the fact that uh, the the officiating was terrible. There was a lot of calls that uh, shouldn't have been called and worked totally against us. So uh, we really never had a chance to win that game. I think it was uh, really set up for the Steelers to win. The 2009 season was a hot mess for the Seattle Seahawks, going 5-11 and on the regular season. In the 2010 offseason, the Seahawks fired head coach Jim Mora after one season, which shows you how bad that co head coach was. After firing head coach Jim Moore, the Seahawks hired Pete Carroll, and it was all uphill from there, going 7-9, and nine, making the playoffs, and upsetting the Super Bowl defending champion Saints in a 41-36 victory in the wild card round. But they lost in the division, divisional round to the Chicago Bears. I uh, really didn't know who he was, and I know I should have, but uh, 
Uh, I didn't have a clue who he was, so I really didn't have an opinion uh, until he started putting the team together that he wanted, and obviously the results have been quite, quite good. The Seattle Seahawks' 2012 draft class was a very controversial draft class. In round one of the draft, the Seahawks selected Bruce Irvin 15th overall. Many people were dumbfounded by this decision because just a month before, Bruce had been arrested for vandalism. Bruce proved everyone wrong by carving out a nice career and winning a Super Bowl as a crucial part of the Legion of Boom. In the second round of the draft, the Seahawks selected Bobby Wagner, 47th overall. Critics also hated this pick for some reason, even though Bobby Wagner is considered one of the best linebackers to play the game. By far the most controversial pick, though, is Wisconsin quarterback Russell Wilson. The Seahawks selected him 75th overall in the third round. He was widely speculated as a guaranteed draft bust. People thought this pick was stupid because the Seahawks had just signed Matt Flynn to the team. Russ proved everyone wrong by not missing a single game in his career. Through 131 games, Russ has thrown the fifth most touchdown passes in the NFL history and is tied with Aaron Rodgers for the fewest interceptions. Uh, I would rate their performance as excellent. Um, obviously, we've seen uh, the aftermath of that uh that draft class uh, with Bobby Wagner and KJ and Russell Wilson. Um, I think especially with Russell Wilson going in the third round uh, and as high as he went for the caliber of talent that he is, uh, is, is, is pretty surprising that he didn't get picked up before. But that's the way the NFL works. That draft. Russell Wilson, really all I have to say is Bruce Irvin, Bobby Wagner, Russell Wilson. Super Bowl 48 took place on February 2nd, 2014 between the Seattle Seahawks and Denver Broncos. It was one of the most anticipated Super Bowls of all time. Both the Denver Broncos and Seattle Seahawks had finished with a 13-3 record in the regular season. The Seahawks tying their 2005 season record. The Denver Broncos offense was coming off one of the best seasons in NFL history. They had scored the most points in NFL history with 606 regular season points and gained 7,313 yards of offense. The fewest points they scored in the entire season was 20 and they only had scored under 30 points in five games. That's just nuts. The Seahawks had a top defense in the league, led by future Hall of Famers Bobby Wagner, Richard Sherman, and Bruce Irvin. They gained the nickname Legion of Boom and allowed the fewest points and yards per game. The Seahawks offense was led by Russell Wilson and Marshawn Lynch, two definite Hall of Famers. Russell Wilson passed for 3,357 yards, rushed for 539 yards, passed for 26 touchdowns and 9 interception in his sophomore season. At the start of Super Bowl 48, the Denver Broncos got the ball, but on the first snap, center Manny Ramirez snapped the ball over Peyton Manning's head, causing this play. After the safety, the Seahawks drove down the field and Steven Hauschka kicked a 31-yard field goal, making the score 5-0. Denver was forced to another 3-and-out on their next drive. Russell Wilson threw a 37-yard pass to Doug Baldwin, leading to another Hauschka kick, increasing the score to 8-0. By the end of the first half, the Seahawks were leading 22-0. And at the beginning of the second, Percy Harvin received a kick and returned it for 87 yards and a touchdown. The Seahawks defense did not let up the rest of the game, and the offense scored touchdown after touchdown. After getting 
a touchdown and two-point conversion in the fourth quarter and down by 35 with no chance of winning and very little time left, the Broncos were driving down the field before Peyton Manning was strip-sacked by Chris Clemens and the game had been sealed. The Seahawks had won their first ever Super Bowl, 43-8. to But this was just the beginning because the Seahawks would return to the big game the next year. Amazing. That's all I have to say. Oh, it was just domination right off the, right out the gate. It was just straight. It was it was the the year that we felt. I think everybody who was a Seattle fan and had been a fan for uh, many years, we felt like we were gonna win. We knew we were gonna win this game. It didn't feel like Denver even had a chance. Um, and then when they got a safety on the first snap, I mean, it was just like game over. We knew it was going to be done. It was 3.15 p.m. on February 1st, 2015. Today, the biggest sports game of the year was about to be played. The 12-4 Seattle Seahawks were about to play the 12-4 New England Patriots in the Super Bowl. In the NFC Championship game, the Seahawks were down by 15 with three minutes left in the game when Russell Wilson rallied the team to 15 unanswered points, taking the game to overtime with a tie of 19-19. The Seattle Seahawks won the overtime coin toss and got the ball at the 13-yard line. Then the Seahawks had an 87-yard touchdown drive, ending with Jermaine's curse scoring the game-ending touchdown, sending the Seattle to its back-to-back -back Super Bowl. The last team to do this was the 2004 New England Patriots. New England received the opening kick of the game, but they were forced to punt by Seattle's defense. Seattle got the ball back, but was also forced to punt by the Patriots' defense. The Patriots got the ball back and drove down to the Seattle 10-yard line and had an opportunity to score. But on a 3rd and 6, Tom Brady threw an interception to cornerback Jeremy Lane, who returned the pass to the 14-yard line. However, during his 4-yard return, Lane had a nasty fall where he broke his wrist and tore his ACL during the play. He was the first injury of the game for the Seahawks. The first half ended with Russell Wilson and the Seahawks driving 80 yards down the field, ending it with an 11-yard touchdown pass to Chris Matthews, tying the game 14-14 to -14 with 7 seconds on the clock. Seattle took a 10-point lead in the third quarter with a touchdown pass to Doug Baldwin 
All Seattle had to do was hold the Patriots' offense and not let them score. New England scored two touchdowns to take the lead to 28-24 with two minutes left on the clock. The Seahawks drove the ball down to the one-yard line and only needed one more run from star running back Marshawn Lynch. But that was not what play was called. Russ snapped the ball and made the pass that would haunt his career for many years to come. Play clock at five. Pass is intercepted at the goal line by Malcolm Butler. Unreal. Malcolm Butler, who almost made the phenomenal play that wound up in Percy's arms. There are flags on the field for a celebration. Five seconds left. You're not going to run Lynch, who is, like, perfect in that record. He's not, he's basically perfect running goal lines. So, and they threw it to, like, a player who's, like, basically unknown, who did nothing after that game. So. And it was first down. And it was first down. So, (laughs) just, it's just, what are you doing, Pete Carroll? Part of being two times super back to back Super Bowl champions. What's my thought on it? Yeah. Uh what everybody else has thought, why did we throw the ball? We had Marshawn Lynch to run it and they didn't run it. It's a hard game. It was a hard end of the game to watch. And it was uh Yeah, it was it was definitely like what just happened. The Seattle Seahawks would never return to their Super Bowl form ever again. The Seahawks struggled in the run game after Marshawn Lynch retired in 2016. In 2017, they drafted Chris Carson, who became their new franchise running back, but his career has been injury-filled. In his rookie season, he suffered a broken ankle in a 46-18 victory over the Indianapolis Colts in Week 4. In week 16 of the 2019 season, he fractured his hip. In the 2020 season so far, he has missed four games due to minor injuries, and Seattle is suffering after a promising 4-5-0 and start, falling to 6-3, and creating a three-way tie for the NFC West. The defense is a shell of its former self. Following the loss of almost all of the Legion of Boom players due to injury and free agency, the defense has fallen so far that it went from the best in the league to 20 in 2014 and to 29th in the league. All in all, the Seahawks had a chance at a dynasty, but they failed to capitalize and had one of the saddest falls from grace in NFL history. So hopefully, with a very talented offense, they can take themselves to another Super Bowl in the future. Thank you for watching.